The Korean martyrs were the victims of religious persecution against Catholic Christians during the 19th century in Korea. At least 8,000 as many as 10,000 adherents to the faith were killed during this period, 103 of whom were canonized en masse in May 1984. Paul Yun Ji Chung and 123 companions were declared venerable. On 7 February 2014, and on 16 August 2014, they were beatified by Pope Francis during the Asian Youth Day in Gwangwamun Plaza, Seoul, South Korea. There are further moves to beatify Catholics who were killed by Communists for their faith in the 20th century during the Korean War. <laughs> <laughs> Background At the end of the 18th century, Korea was ruled by the Joseon dynasty. It was a society based on Confucianism and its hierarchical, class relationships. There was a small minority of privileged scholars and nobility while the majority were commoners paying taxes, providing labor, and manning the military, all above a slave class. Even though it was scholars who first introduced Christianity to Korea, it was the ordinary people who flocked to the new religion. The new believers called themselves Chanju Kyo Udal, literally, Friends of the Teaching of God of Heaven. The term, Friends, was the only term in the Confucian understanding of relationships which implied equality. <laughs> History During the early 17th century, Christian literature written in Chinese was imported from China to Korea. On one of these occasions, around 1777, Christian literature obtained from Jesuits in China led educated Korean Christians to study. Although no Koreans were converted to Catholicism by these books until the last quarter of the 18th century, the ideas of the Catholic priests espoused in them were debated and denounced as heterodox as early as 1724. When a Chinese priest managed to secretly enter the country a dozen years later, he found 4,000 Catholics, none of whom had ever seen a priest. The dynamic Catholic communities were led almost entirely by educated laypeople from the aristocracy, as they were the only ones who could read the books that were written in Hanja. The Christian community sent a delegation on foot to Beijing, 750 miles away, to ask the city's bishop for bishops and priests. Eventually, two Chinese priests were sent, but their ministry was short-lived, and another 40 years passed before the Paris Foreign Mission Society began its work in Korea with the arrival of Father Mabant in 1836. Paul Chong Hsang, Augustine Yu Chin Gil and Charles Cho Shin Chul had made several visits to Beijing in order to find ways of introducing missionaries into Korea. Since the persecution of 1801, there had been no priest to care for the Christian community. Serious dangers awaited the missionaries who dared to enter Korea. The bishops and priests who confronted this danger, as well as the lay Christians who aided and sheltered them, were in constant threat of losing their lives. Bishop Laurent Imbert and ten other French missionaries were the first Paris Foreign Mission Society priests to enter Korea and to embrace a different culture. During the daytime, they kept in hiding, but at night they traveled about on foot attending to the spiritual needs of the faithful and administering the sacraments. The first Korean priest, Andrew Kim Taegon, succeeded in entering Korea as a missionary. However, 13 months after his ordination, he was put to death by the sword in 1846 at the age of 26. The Catholics gathering in one place with no distinction on the basis of class were perceived to undermine hierarchical Confucianism, the ideology which held the state together. The new learning was seen to be subversive of the establishment, and this gave rise to systematic suppression and persecution. The suffering the believers endured is well known through official documents which detail trials and the sentences. There were four major persecutions, the last one in 1866, at which time there were only 20,000 Catholics in Korea, 10,000 had died. Those figures give a sense of the enormous sacrifice of the early Korean Catholics. Other Christian denominations did not enter Korea until some time later. The vast majority of the martyrs were simple lay people, including men and women, married and single, old and young. More than 10,000 martyrs died in persecutions which extended over more than 100 years. Of all these martyrs, 79 were beatified in 1925. They had died in the persecutions of 1839, Kihei persecution, 1846, Pyongho persecution, and 1866, Pyongyan persecution. In addition, 24 martyrs were beatified in 1968. 
Altogether, 103 martyrs were canonized by Pope John Paul II on 6 May 1984. In a break with tradition, the ceremony did not take place in Rome, but in Seoul. Their feast day is September 20. Currently, Korea has the fourth largest number of saints in the Catholic world. From the last letter of Andrew Kim Taegon to his parish as he awaited martyrdom with a group of 20 persons. My dear brothers and sisters, know this, our Lord Jesus Christ upon descending into the world took innumerable pains upon and constituted the Holy Church through his own passion and increases it through the passion of its faithful. Now, however, some fifty or sixty years since the Holy Church entered into our Korea, the faithful suffer persecutions again. Even today persecution rages, so that many of our friends of the same faith, among whom I am myself, have been thrown into prison. Since we have formed one body, how can we not be saddened in our innermost hearts? How can we not experience the pain of separation in our human faculties? However, as Scripture says, God cares for the least hair of our heads, and indeed He cares with His omniscience, therefore, how can persecution be considered as anything other than the command of God, or His prize, or precisely His punishment? We are twenty here, and thanks be to God all are still well. If anyone is killed, I beg you not to forget his family. I have many more things to say, but how can I express them with pen and paper? I make an end to this letter. Since we are now close to the struggle, I pray you to walk in faith, so that when you have finally entered into heaven, we may greet one another. I leave you my kiss of love. In the early 1870s, Father Claude Charles Dallet compiled a comprehensive history of the Catholic Church in Korea, largely from the manuscripts of martyred Bishop Antoine Davaloy. The Korean martyrs were known for the staunchness, sincerity, and number of their converts. An English lawyer and sinologist Edward Harper Parker observed that, Koreans, unlike Chinese and Japanese, make the most staunch and devoted converts. The enemies make better converts than either Chinese or Japanese, whose tricky character, however, they share, but they are gentler and more sympathetic, they do not possess the staunch masculinity of the Koreans. According to Ernst Oppert, an observation, founded upon many years' experience, may not be out of place here, and that is, that among all Asiatic nationalities there is probably none more inclined to be converted to Christianity than the Korean. He becomes a Christian from conviction, not from any mercenary motives. Bishop and martyr Simeon Francois Bernot wrote, The Korean possesses the most perfect dispositions for receiving the faith. Once convinced, he accepts and attaches himself to it, in spite of all sacrifices it may cost him. Reverend Francis Goldie stated, Certainly few countries, if any, have to tell of such a painful apostolate, or of one which has had such success. Japan alone in later days can boast a martyrology at all to compare with that of Korea in the number of the slain, or in the heroism of those who died for Christ. Topic. Individual martyrs. Topic. Andrew Kim Taegon, Paul Chong Hesang and 101 Companions The Christian community first began to take shape when Yi Sung Hun started to study Christian doctrine by himself and was eventually baptized and given the name Peter in 1784. Because of their belief in the Christian God, the first Korean Christians were persecuted repeatedly, rejected by their families, and suffered a loss of their social rank. Despite persecutions, the faith continued to spread. The Christian community in Korea was given the assistance of two Chinese priests, but their ministry was short-lived, and another 40 years passed before the Paris Foreign Mission Society began its work in Korea with the arrival of Father Mauban in 1836. A delegation was selected and sent to Beijing on foot, 750 miles, in order to ask the Bishop of Beijing to send them bishops and priests. The same appeal was made to the Pope in Rome. Serious dangers awaited the missionaries who dared to enter Korea. The bishops and priests who confronted this danger, as well as the lay Christians who aided and sheltered them, were in constant threat of losing their lives. In fact, until the granting of religious liberty in Korea in 1886, there was a multitude of "...disciples who shed their blood, in imitation of Christ our Lord, and who willingly submitted to death, for the salvation of the world." Lumen Gentium, 42. Among those who died, and later labeled as martyrs, were 11 priests and 92 lay people who would be canonized as saints. 
Bishop Laurent Imbert and ten other French missionaries were the first Paris Foreign Mission Society priests to enter Korea and to embrace a different culture for the love of God. During the daytime, they kept in hiding, but at night they traveled about on foot attending to the spiritual needs of the faithful and administering the sacraments. The first Korean priest, Andrew Kim Tae Gon, prompted by his faith in God and his love for the Christian people, found a way to make the difficult task of a missionary entry into Korea. However, just 13 months after his ordination he was put to death by the sword when he was just 26 years old and the holy oils of ordination were still fresh on his hands. Paul Chong Ha Sang, Augustine Yu Chin Gil and Charles Cho Shin Chul had made several visits to Beijing in order to find new ways of introducing missionaries into Korea. Since the persecution of 1801, there had been no priest to care for the Christian community. Finally, they succeeded in opening a new chapter in the history of the extension of the church in Korea with the arrival of a bishop and ten priests of the Paris Foreign Mission Society. Among the martyrs honored were fifteen virgins, including the two sisters Agnes Kim Hyo Ju and Columba Kim Hyo Im who loved Jesus with undivided heart These women, in an era when Christian religious life was still unknown in Korea, lived in community and cared for the sick and the poor. Similarly, John Yi Kwang Hyal died a martyr's death after having lived a life of celibacy in consecrated service to the church. It is also important to recall in a special way some of the other martyrs who were canonized that day. Damien Nam Myong Hayek and Maria Yi Yan Wei were models of family life. John Nam Chong Sam, though of high social rank, was a model of justice, chastity, and poverty. John Pak Hu Jae, who, after he lost his parents in the persecutions, learned to survive by making straw sandals. Peter Kwan Tug and who devoted himself to meditation. Anna Pak A Gi, who, although she did not have a deep grasp of Christian doctrine, was wholly devoted to Jesus and his. Blessed Mother, and finally, Peter Utae Chul who at the tender age of 13, bravely confessed his faith and died a martyr. More than 10,000 martyrs died in persecutions which extended over more than 100 years. Of all these martyrs, 79 were beatified in 1925. They had died in the persecutions of 1839, Kihei persecution, 1846 Pyong-o persecution, and 1866 Pyong-in persecution. In addition, 24 martyrs were beatified in 1968. Altogether, 103 martyrs were canonized on 6 May 1984 on the shores of the Han River and in view of the martyrs' shrines at Sainamtu and Choltasan, where they went to their eternal reward. Topic. Paul Yun Ji Chung and 123 Companions Yun Ji Chung Paul and his 123 companions have been the foundation of the Korean Catholic Church until this day. They played a pivotal role in evangelization with their pious faith which contributed to the growth of faithful in Korea. The testimony of their faith attributed as great encouragement to all the believers in the early stage of Catholicism in Korea, where many suffered martyrdom. Among Yun Ji Chung Paul and his fellow 123 martyrs, 53 of most of them suffered from persecution during the Shinyo persecution period 1801. Prior to Shinyo persecution, three martyrs during Shinhai persecution 1791, three martyrs during Yulmyo persecution 1795, and eight martyrs were persecuted during the Jiangsa persecution 1797. Martyrs persecuted after the Shinyo persecution are one martyr in 1841, 12 1815, and two 1819, respectively during the Yulhai persecution, four in Zhenghe persecution 1827, 18 in Kahai persecution 1839, 20 during the Biangan persecution 1866 to 1888. Regionally persecution was executed throughout the country. In the capital of Chosen, Hanyang, 38, Jiangsan Province 29, Jengra Province 24, Chungcheng Province 18, Jiangji Province 12, Gongwan Province 3. Hanyang, the capital was the region where most severe persecution was conducted. The 124 martyrs exhibited astonishing bravery in faith and witnessed the love of God with their lives. Martyrs' confession of faith for love in Jesus Christ culminated with the sacrifice of their lives. Yun Ji Chung was the first martyr during the Xinhai persecution which occurred in 1791, in the fifteenth year under the reign of King Zheng 1791. Yun Ji Chung Paul testified God as the Almighty Father of all mankind. He testified, 
A man can go against a king or their parents, but never can I disobey the Almighty Lord, our Father." Yun strongly believed that he can glorify the Lord through his death. We must take a moment to reflect on the historical background of Chosen Dynasty. It was the time when fidelity towards parents and loyalty to the king dominated common value. Our martyrs respected the king and loved their parents but their priority was the profound faith they had in God. Their love and faith in the Almighty Father ousted materialism and even mankind. Yun Ji Chung is distinguished as the representative of his fellow martyrs because he was the very first martyr from the land where Christianity, unprecedentedly sprout from laity without missionaries. The abundant fruits of the 124 martyrs continue to grow vividly not only in their dioceses, but throughout the whole Korean church now until today. Many Catholics and their shepherds are inspired by the faith and love they have shown. Their testimony of faith came to be recognized immediately after the beatification of the 103 saints presided by John Paul II in 1984. Biography of major martyrs Yun Ji Chung Paul, 1759 to 1791. Yun Ji Chung Paul, the first chosen martyr killed for his Catholic faith, was born in 1759 to a noble family in Jinsen, Jiela Du. Yun Ji Hian Francis, who was martyred during the Xinyu persecution of 1801, was his younger brother. In 1783, Yun passed the first state examination and learned about Catholicism for the first time through his cousin Yun Yak Yong John. After being baptized in 1787, he preached the Catholic doctrine to his mother, younger brother, and cousin Quan Sang Yian James. He also kept in touch with Yu Hang Jiam Augustine to keep up mission work. In 1791, Bishop Guvea of Beijing ordered a ban on traditional ancestral rites within his diocese. Yun Ji Chung and Quan Sang Yian, in accordance with the church's commands, set their family's ancestral tablets on fire. Chung's mother passed away the following year. She requested to receive a Catholic funeral which her son duly provided for her. These actions angered the royal family. News of Yun's actions led to dispute in the royal court. In the end, Zhengzhou backed the Noron faction pushed to oppress Catholicism and ordered the arrest of Yun and Quan. The governor of Jinsen went to Yun's house. He discovered the absence of the family's ancestral plates. At the time the pair were in hiding. Upon hearing that Yunz's uncle had been taken into custody they handed themselves into the authorities. In the face of calls to renounce their Catholic faith the pair refused. The governor judged that getting them to abandon their religion was beyond him. They were sent to a government building in Jeonju. The pair continued to refuse apostasy despite interrogation and torture. An official report on the situation was delivered to the royal court. Opinion within the court was in favor of the death penalty. Zhengzhou supported this view and ordered their execution. On 8 December 1791 Yun and Quan were beheaded. This episode is referred to as the Jinsen Incident. Rev. Ju Moon Mo James 1752 the first missionary priest to be dispatched to Chosen. Born in Gangnam area in China in 1752, he lost his parents early in life and were raised by his grandmother. He entered Catholic by himself and became a priest as one of the first graduates at Beijing Archdiocese Seminary. At that time, Bishop Guvea in Beijing was planning to send a clergy to Chosen. He chose Father Zhu, who had a strong faith and looked similar to Chosen people. After leaving Beijing in February 1794, Father Zhu waited at Yodong area until the Amnogong River froze enough to cross across. On the appointed date, he went to a town located on the border between China and Chosen to meet secret envoys sent from Chosen and entered Chosen on the night of December 24. Since then, Father Ju stayed at the house of a faithful to learn Hangul, the Korean alphabets. On Easter of 1795, he held a mass with the faithful for the first time. However, after his entry was revealed, he escaped to female President Kong Wan Suk's house and continued to pray in many areas in secrecy. The number of the faithful increased to 10,000 after six years but as the Catholic persecution of 1801 occurred and the faithful were forced to confess the location of Father Jew, he decided to surrender on March 11th of that year. On May 31, Father Jew was decapitated at Sanamtio area near Han River at the age of 49. Yun Yu Il Paul 1760 a secret envoy from Beijing who helped missionary to enter Chosen. 
He was born in Yeoju, Kyunki-do in 1760. After moving to Yangon, he encountered Catholic while studying under Kwan Chul Shin. He learned Catholic doctrine from Kwan Il Shin, the younger brother of Kwan Chul Shin, and entered into Catholic. He then preached the doctrine to his family. In 1789, Yun Yu Il was selected as a secret envoy by the church leaders to report the situation of chosen church to Bishop Guvea. Thus, he went to Beijing two times, in 1789 and in 1790. In 1791, Bishop Guvea's plan to dispatch a priest failed and persecution took place in Chosen. Nonetheless, Yun Yu Il continued to endeavor to dispatch a priest. In 1794, he finally succeeded in bringing Father Ju Moon Mo to Chosen. Since then, he was responsible for keeping in contact with Beijing Church. In 1795, Yun Yu Il was arrested along with Ji Wang Sabas, Choi In Gil Matthew. They were tortured to tell the location of Father Ju, but their strong endurance and wise response rather confused the persecutors. As a result, the three of them were beaten to death on June 28 of that year, when Yun Yu Il was 35, Ji Wang 28, and Choi In Gil 30. Jung Yak Jong Augustinus (1760–1801), the first Catholic lay theologian in Korea. In 1760, he was born into a family of scholars in Maje current Nyungne Ri Jon Mayan, Nimyangju Si Jong Ji Go. He is the father of Jung Chul Sang Charles, minus 1801, who will be beatified together with the 123 blessed and street, Jung Ha Sang Paul martyred in 1839, who was declared saint in 1984. After learning Catholic doctrine from his older brother Jung Yak Jae-on in 1786, he moved to Yangjin Bunwen current Bunwen Ri, Namjung Mayan, Gwangju Gun, Jung Ji Go to live a life of faith and preached a doctrine to his neighbors while participating in church activities. After Father Ju Moon Mo came in 1794, Jung Yak Jong often visited Han Yang to help church work. He also wrote two easy Hangul textbooks called Jugyo Yoji, a catechism in the Korean language, and distributed them to Christians with Father Ju's approval. Moreover, he became the first president of a layperson association called Myeongdu Ho, which was organized by Father Ju. When persecution began in his hometown in 1800, Jung Yak Jong and his family moved to Han Yang. However, Catholic persecution of 1801 began in the following year and Jung Yak Jong was arrested. As he tried to preach the righteousness of Catholic doctrine to persecutors, he was decapitated at Siosomun in 15 days after he was arrested. When he was martyred, he said, I'd rather die looking up at the sky than to die looking down at the ground, and was decapitated while looking up at the sky. That was 8 April 1801, when he was at age 41. Kong Wan Suk Columba, 1761-1801, female leader of Chosen Catholic. In 1761, she was born to a concubine of a noble family in Naipo area in Chungcheong-do. She learned about Catholic soon after she was married and practiced doctrine by reading Catholic books. During the persecution in 1791, she was imprisoned while taking care of the imprisoned faithful. Kong Wan Suk guided her mother-in-law and her son from previous marriage Hong Pil Ju Phillips, martyred in 1801 to enter Catholic but she could not make her husband enter Catholic. Later, when her husband got a concubine, Kong Wan Suk and her husband lived separately. After hearing that the faithful in Han Yang are well informed with Catholic doctrine, she moved to Han Yang with her mother-in-law and her son. She provided financial support to Christians working on recruiting a clergy and was baptized by Father Ju Moon Mo. Knowing her fine personality, Father Ju appointed Kong Wan Suk as a female president to take care of the faithful. When a persecution in 1795 took place, Kong Wan Suk took advantage of the fact that persecutors cannot search a house owned by a woman and let Father Ju to take refuge in her house. Her house was also used for the faithful's assembly. On April 6, 1801, Kong Wan Suk helped Father Ju to escape while being arrested. Although persecutors tried to trace Father Ju's whereabouts through her, she refused to confess. On 2 July, she was decapitated outside Siosomun at age 40. Yu Hang Jiam Augustine 1756-1801, the priest of Ho Nam. Yu Hang Jiam Augustine was born in 1756 in Chonam, Jeonju. He learned the catechism soon after Catholicism was introduced to Korea in 1784 and became a Catholic. 
His sons Yu Young Chul John, Yu Moon Sok John, and his daughter in law Yi Sun I Lutgarda, and his nephew Yu Young Seong Matthew will be beatified along with Yu Hang Jiam Augustine. He showed compassion and gave alms to poor neighbors as well as to his servants. Augustine Yu was appointed as pastor of Jila du Region when, in the spring of 1786, the leaders of the Catholics held a meeting and appointed clergy at their own discretion. Afterwards, Augustine Yu returned to his hometown and celebrated Mass and administered the sacraments to the faithful. However, after a while, the leaders of the Catholics understood that such an act was a sacrilege. As soon as this was brought to his attention, he stopped immediately. When the persecution of 1801 broke out, Augustine Yu, who was recognized as the head of the church in the Jila Du region, was first to be arrested. He was taken to Seoul Hanyang, from Jeonju where he underwent interrogation and torture at the police headquarters. However, since he was already determined to die a martyr, he neither betrayed the other believers nor said anything that would harm the church. The persecutors, despite all their efforts, could not add any of the information they were looking for. Hence, they charged him with the crime of treason and ordered that he be executed. With this decision, Augustine Yu was transferred back to Jeonju, where he was hacked to pieces outside the south gate of Jeonju. Wang Il Ji Wang Simon (1757–1802). Wang Il Ji Wang Simon was born in Hongju, Chungcheong, due to a low-class family. Around 1792, he moved to Hongsan, where he went to see Yi John Chong Louis Gonzaga to learn about the Catholic teaching. After he understood the faith, he left his hometown and moved to Jongsang due to have more freedom to practice his religious life. The Catholics knew about the social status of Simon Wang, but they welcomed him with open hearts and surrounded him with Christian charity. On receiving such treatment he sometimes made jokes as follows. Here, everybody treats me as a human being despite my low-class status. Now, I believe that heaven exists here and hereafter. In 1800 Simon Wang moved to the neighboring house of Zheng Yak Zhang Augustine and when Augustine Zheng moved to Seoul Hanyang, he also moved to Seoul Hanyang with his younger brother and made his living by selling firewood. In 1801, Simon Wang was arrested while he was on his way to the mountain to get firewood. By stating that the Catholic religion is a holy religion, he was cruelly beaten to the point that one of his legs was broken. Simon Wang was then transferred to his hometown Hongju and was beheaded. It was on 30 January 1802 when Simon Wang was 45 years old. Yi Sun I Lutgarda A couple who kept their virginity through faith Yi Sun I Lutgarda was born in 1782 to a well-known noble family. Her brothers Yi Zhang Du Charles martyred in 1801 and Yi Zhang Ian Paul martyred in 1827, and her husband Yu Young Chul John martyred in 1801 will be beatified with her. Yi Yun Ha. Matthew, Lutgarda Yi's father, inherited the scholarship of his maternal grandfather Yi Ik who was a renowned scholar of the time. Matthew Yi became a Catholic in 1784, soon after Catholicism was introduced to Korea, when he met Kwan Chul Sin, and Kwan Il Sin. Lutgarda Yi received her first Holy Communion from Father Zhou Wen Mo James and made a vow of chastity. However, in the society of that time, it was extremely difficult for a young woman to remain single. When she was 15 years old, Lutgarda confessed to her mother that she had decided to keep her vow of chastity for God. Her mother agreed with her decision and consulted Father James Zhou. Father James Zhou remembered that Yu Young Chul John also wanted to live a life of celibacy. Hence, he immediately sent a messenger and arranged their marriage. In 1798, Lutgarda Yi went to her husband's hometown, Chonam in Jeonju and made a vow to live a celibate life. During Xinyu persecution in 1801, Yu Hang Gom Augustine, her father-in-law, was first arrested. Lutgarda Yi was arrested later and was taken to Jeonju. Lutgarda Yi was condemned to exile and left for Hamjong Du. However soon the police followed them and arrested them again. On 31 January 1802, Lutgarda Yi was taken to the execution ground in Jeonju, called Supjungi, and was beheaded. Lutgarda Yi was 20 years old. The letter she wrote while she was imprisoned in Jeonju still remains until today and testifies for the values of Catholics of the time. Kim Jin Hu Pius (1739–1814), the ancestor of the Saint Kim Taegon Andrew. Kim Jin Hu Pius was born in Solmoy, Chungcheong-do. 
He was the great grandfather of Saint Kim Taegon Andrew and the father of Kim Jong Han Andrew, who was martyred in 1816 and who will be beatified with the 123 Blessed. Pius Kim encountered Catholicism when his eldest son learned the Catechism from Yi John Chong Gonzaga and taught it to his brothers. Then, Pius Kim was about 50 years old. As he obtained a small government post from the governor, he strongly refused the advice of his children. However, as his sons kept persuading him, he gradually drawn towards Jesus Christ and quitted his government position to focus on fulfilling religious duties. When Pius Kim was arrested during the Sinhai persecution in 1791, he professed his faith in God. He was arrested four to five more times but was released each time. He was also arrested during the Xinyu persecution in 1801, but was exiled and set free. Pius Kim was arrested again in 1805 and was taken to Himi. This time, he behaved like a real Catholic and professed his faith in God without hesitation. He stayed in prison for a long time without being sentenced to death. In prison, the officials and prison guards respected him for his noble and dignified personality and conduct. He spent ten years in prison, during which he endured the sufferings and pains of prison. He died in prison on 1 December 1814 at the age of 75. Yi Seong Rai 1801-1840, mother who inherited faith to her children. She was born in 1801 in Hongju, Chungcheong Du. She was from the family of Louis Gonzaga Yi John Chong. At the age of 17, she married Saint Francis Cho Kyung Wan and lived in Derak Gol, Hongju. In 1821 she gave birth to their first son, Thomas Cho Yong Up. Due to the danger of persecution the family had to move frequently but Yi Seong Rai told biblical stories to her children and taught them to endure difficulties and to be patient. After settling down in Sarizan currently Gunpo City, Jungji-do she helped her husband to set up the Christian village. Meanwhile, her son Thomas Cho yong up was chosen to be a candidate for the seminarian and was sent to Macau to study theology. In 1839, during Gihai persecution her husband went back and forth Hanyang now Seoul, to take care of the bodies of the martyrs, she supported her husband and finally was arrested by the police with her whole family in Sarizan. She suffered painfully not because of the torture, but because of her maternal love for her newborn baby who was nearly starved to death due to lack of milk from his mother. Yi could no longer abandon her baby so she yielded to defy her faith and was released from prison. When her eldest son left to China to be a seminarian, she was imprisoned once again. When she was sentenced to death, with divine grace and prayers from her Catholic friends, she overcame all the temptation and was sent to Dangoge now Wanhioro Tu Ga, Yongsen Gu, Seoul, to be beheaded at the age of 39. Topic. Legacy Pope John Paul II, speaking at the canonization, said, the Korean Church is unique because it was founded entirely by lay people. This fledgling church, so young and yet so strong in faith, withstood wave after wave of fierce persecution. Thus, in less than a century, it could boast of 10,000 martyrs. The death of these martyrs became the leaven of the church and led to today's splendid flowering of the church in Korea. Even today their undying spirit sustains the Christians in the Church of Silence in the north of this tragically divided land." After the canonization of the 103 martyrs, the Catholic Church in Korea felt that the martyrs who died in the other persecutions also need to be recognized. In 2003, the beatification process for 124 martyrs who died in persecutions between 1791 and 1888 began, they were declared venerable by Pope Francis on 7 February 2014. The group is headed by Paul Yun Ji Chung, a nobleman who converted to Catholicism and refused to have his deceased mother buried under the traditional Confucian rite. His refusal led to a massive persecution of Christians called the Sinhai Persecution in 1791. Paul was beheaded on 8 December 1791, together with his cousin, James Kwan Sang Yian. They were the first members of the Korean nobility to be killed for the faith. Among the martyrs in this group are Fr. James Zhou Wen Mo (1752–1801), a Chinese priest who secretly ministered to the Christians in Korea; Augustine Jung Yak Jong (1760–1801), the husband of Saint Cecilia Yu Sa and father of Sts. Paul Chong Ha Sang and Elizabeth Chong Chong Hai, Columba Kong Wan Suk 1761-1801, known as the 
Catechist of the Korean Martyrs. Augustine Yu Hang Jiam, also known as the Apostle of Jila Du, and Maria Yi Seong Rai, the wife of Saint Francis Cho Kyung Wan. Also included in the group are Augustine Yu Hang Jiam's son John Yu Jung Chul and his wife Lutgarda Yi Sun I. They both decided to live celibate lives in order to fully dedicate themselves to God, but the Confucian society, which greatly valued furthering the family line, made it impossible for them to live as celibates. Fr. James Zhou introduced the two to each other and suggested them to marry each other and live as a virgin couple. The two were married in 1797 and were martyred four years later. Topic. Korean Martyrs Museum Shrine The museum shrine, which contains rooms for liturgical celebration and prayer, was built in 1967 on the site in Jeoldusan, where many of the Korean martyrs died from 1866 to 1873. The Shrine Museum presents numerous historical documents, visual reconstructions, photographs and documentaries. The Christian community suffered harsh persecutions, especially in the second half of the 1800s. In 2004 the Archdiocese of Seoul opened its investigation into the cause for beatification of the servant of God Paul Yun Ji Chung and his 123 companions who in 1791 were tortured and killed in Odium Fide, in hatred of the faith. Topic. See also Christianity in Korea Roman Catholicism in South Korea Seohik Catholic persecution of 1801 Robert Germain Thomas Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Atwater, Donald and Catherine Rachel John 1993. The Penguin Dictionary of Saints, 3rd edition. New York, Penguin Books. ISBN 0-14-051312-4. Dallet, Charles Histoire de l'Église de Corée, Volume 1. Paris, Library Victor Palmé, in French. Dallet, Charles Histoire de l'Église de Corée, Volume 2. Paris, Library Victor Palmé, in French. Fathers of the London Oratory, 1859. The New Glories of the Catholic Church. London, Richardson and Son. Topic: External links. Homily of Pope John Paul II given for the Mass for the canonization of the Korean martyrs. List and brief description of martyrs. History of the missions e-trangers de Paris map.